Hi, hello, welcome to the fifth activity in the course of business planning. This time we'll focus on planning, strictly speaking, so on building plans, sequential plans for the purposes of your business plan. Uh, in terms of general introduction, we should be aware whenever we prepare a business plan that it is impossible to nail down a rigid plan of actions. It is impossible to nail a plan that we can follow like to the letter. Business means flexibility, business means taking risks and purposefully exposing ourselves to risks. So setting a plan inside a business plan is one more proof, one more demonstration for your prospective investors that you have done the homework, that you have done the analytical work about the business concept you want to pitch them. So, as usually, as in all the other aspects of the business plan, here too, when you set a plan, so a plan of actions, keep it simple, keep it uh, very down to earth and focus on the essential steps you need to follow on the uh, on the essential sequence not on something like very elaborate uh, okay so i go to the powerpoint presentation uh, as it is the custom in those uh, in those videos uh, first of all i give you an instruction how to do your planning and then I make a demo of my own planning. So I took the business concept, which I worked through the preceding four activities. The, the idea of starting a manufacturing business, uh, which makes small wind turbines and small hydroelectric turbines. I take the results of my goal setting and my risk assessment, and I put it here as a demo. I tried to follow the same guidelines I give you, uh, so I tried to do that quick planning in less than 45 minutes and you, will, and you will see the results. So first of all, the theory. So things that you should know about the general way of planning. So take your goals and your risks as you assessed them in the previous activities and make two basic scenarios the best case scenario and the worst case one. The best case scenario, you plan as if every step was supposed to give you the desired outcome. So as if every step in your plan would bring you closer and closer to your desired goals. In the worst case scenario, you imagine that you make every possible mistake or that every possible external risk sort of consumes itself in your actions. So it is an, a scenario when everything what could possibly go wrong really goes wrong. Now put those two, two scenarios like next to each other, back to back, and try to ask yourself how they interplay. You will see that you can then nail down very clearly those pivotal moments in the development of your business, those key steps that you really need to handle in order to be successful in the development of their business. And the understanding of those key moments is your critical path, something that we call the critical path in the development of a business. Once you have nailed that aspect, so once you have nailed the critical path, ask yourself about resources or about assets that you will need. Try to distinguish two categories. In one category, put all the resources, all the assets you need to make your best case scenario come to life. So everything that is like uh, instrumental to your success. And on the other list, or in uh, the second category, put all the resources you need to shield against your risks. These are your reserve assets that you need to hedge or to counteract risks encountered in your business. 
Then put those resources on a timeline. Ask yourself when do you need them? At which specific point in time you need to have those resources? Okay, now we go into the demo, into my own demo. So my goals and my risks, a reminder. I want to develop a manufacturing business in small wind and hydro turbines with a strong operational cash flow assured by a vertical integration with operating power installations and or uh, by horizontally uh, integrating it with the manufacturing of other industrial goods. Operations should be hedged through the ownership of substantial land property with a strong potential of growth in value, preferably located out of typical industrial zones. So this is the desired outcome that I want. Now, my major risk consists in failing to achieve proper integration in the business model and thus failing to generate strong positive cash flow at the operational level. Now, the key points on my critical path, the key points that I could identify so far, I will make them slightly bigger, okay, oh, maybe a little bit smaller, no, slightly bigger, okay. They fit into the window. So the first critical point uh, is to figure out the right combination of technological assets in my business. A manufacturing business naturally is based on some competitive technology, especially if I want to integrate this business with something else, like with operating power installations, nailing down the right basket of technological assets. It's really like a turning point in my critical path. Another is to develop the proper integration in my business, vertically or horizontally. And I realized, as I did my notes for this demo, that this one is critical. Nailing down the correct way of integrating that manufacturing business vertically or horizontally, it is really the pivotal point, the pivotal step in the development of this specific business. Vertical integration means investment in power installations, possibly in the form of joint ventures. Horizontal integration means uh, developing a whole range of industrial goods besides turbines. And as I see it very intuitively as a plan, it is one way or, 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 or the other. Either I choose the vertical way or the horizontal way. Uh, actually, in the world of wind turbines, I just know I know just one business in Europe. Uh, it is a Spanish company called Iberdrola, which does all of it. So, which is both vertically integrated and horizontally integrated. All the others go one way or the other. And the third pivotal point in my critical path is to collect enough capital in the early phase to acquire sufficient real estate for hedging. So these are my critical points on my critical path. And now I try to translate it into resources. Now let me switch position to this side of that window. I will reformat the slide a little bit so as to make myself a little bit more room on the left. Okay, so the key resources. I need for making this plan come to life or the key resources I need to face those key points on my critical path. First of all, I need the technological know-how. In order to nail down the right combination of technological assets, I need the know-how. And it is tightly correlated with the business contacts that I have. Huh? because business contacts will determine the possibility to integrate vertically or horizontally and consequently I will need to adapt my technology to this strategic choice vertical integration or horizontal integration. And the second uh, resource is a relatively large amount of cash. I will magnify it because there is a lot of text here. Uh, I want to have it like in the center of the screen. 
So I need a relatively large amount of cash or similarly liquid capital, something like quickly tradable securities at the starting point to assure enough flexibility in the acquisition of key resources. By the way, uh, you can find on, on YouTube uh, two of my videos, educational videos about the business model in Netflix or in the business of Netflix. And in the early years of Netflix, you can see that when they were starting, they accumulated a lot of cash to be flexible in the acquisition of that intellectual property to shows and movies. Mm -hmm. um, there is a saying that cash is king. Yes, when you need to be flexible, really cash is king. So this is a typical, and by the way, it is a typical pattern in recent years the, that I observed like across the board. We, in the presence of quick technological change, companies tend to hold more and more cash in their balance sheets uh, to face all the contingencies and to stay flexible in the presence of contingencies. And this is what I want in my plan, in this demo of my planning for the purposes of this business concept. I want that comfortable cushion of cash to give me flexibility. And there is a remark which is immediately below that immediate access to cash, so money like held on the bank account, can be replaced or combined with certain kind of contracts. For example, I, have a, I can have a so-called open credit line with the bank or I can have investors who, besides being investors in the equity, are ready to lend money to the company sort of quickly, like that, huh? snappily. Mm, this is another uh, solution, and this, uh, and this one, so uh, having the same investors or the same people or entities as both uh, shareholders and lenders is a business scheme frequently applied, for example, in German companies. This is like a German style. My reserve resources to shield against risk are simple. It is land. Huh? And uh, I think as that as for timelining the acquisition of land, the time as for timelining the acquisition of that hedge land, I have some flexibility. I don't have to buy it immediately. Uh, essentially, the value of the land owned as a hedging asset should be somehow in phase with the pace of investment in my technological assets, but it doesn't have to be very quick. And now is if, if I say very quick or not really quick, what does it mean? So now the final timeline of my planning. Okay, I swing to another corner of the window once again. That's so the timeline of my plan. I generally I essentially set my goals, if you followed my demo in the activity goal setting, activity number three, you know that I set my goals in a perspective of five years. Both my goals and my risk factors turn around the operational cash flow. And it is like a rule in business, like a, uh, like a common experience of business people, that when you start a business from scratch, it is rarely achievable to have a steady positive cash flow during the first two years. In the third year of operations, you can expect to have like a nicely positive operational cash flow if everything goes well. But the first two years are the like the launching and the gathering speed moment. So in my planning, I distinguish two phases. I put them in the center of the screen. So phase one, it is the initial adjustment of my business model. Uh, it is year one and year two of operations. That's the period for nailing down the developing, uh, the developing business contacts, deals and technological assets. And phase number two, development strictly spoken, year three through five, so three, four, five. And this is when I am supposed to consume the fruit of decisions made in phase one. Hmm? So this is my 
outline of a plan in the development of this specific business concept. Okay, that would be all in this specific activity devoted to planning. As you could see, planning in a business plan doesn't necessarily require building like big charts, flow charts and so on. You can keep it simple and you, you should keep it simple so as to be able to like lay down the plan to your in the investors if they ask you to pitch it. Okay, as usually, uh, I, I hope you will have fun with practicing this specific activity, so planning with your own business concept. Have fun with science and have fun with life. Bye.